Good morning, and welcome to Devotions with the Deacon. Uh, today is um, January the 7th, which is one day after the celebration of the Epiphany, always on January the 6th. And uh, as it's described in uh, St. Augustine's prayer book, which I love having, um, the Epiphany on January 6th concludes the 12 days of Christmas and celebrates the revelation of Christ to the Gentiles and, and the response of the three kings to that revelation. Along with Christmas Eve or day, New Year's Day and Epiphany are days to participate in the Eucharist, if at all possible. So um, today I wanna to talk a little bit about the Epiphany and read some things. Let's just do some, I thought we could just do some meditations. I wanna start actually with the collect for the day. If I can find it quickly here, yes. Um, let us pray. O oh God, by the leading of a star, you manifested your only son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us, who know you now by faith, to your presence, where we may see your glory face to face. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. It's a beautiful, beautiful prayer. And of course, this is the time um, when we always read the gospel about the three kings. And I want to read, read that passage again because... Um, this is the joyful way that the word got out to others besides just uh, the people of Israel. Um, so here's a reading from uh, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search di diligently for the child, and when you have found him, Bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and uh, paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Here ends the reading. I love, of course, the fact, as wise men, um, those people from another country who knew how to listen to the signs there were many people who thought that way in those days, that there were signs uh, that they could listen to um, and pay attention to that would give them some foretelling. And this, this was true, and this foretelling was um, what was happening um, dur during the Epiphany. It was a, uh, a very exciting time, in my view, because these wise men were able to understand the signs of Herod the signs and feelings that they got from him. They could see that he was danger. They were also able to accept the birth of this child, and this child is something very important in the world. 
And so they moved on instead of returning to Herod. They, they went home by another way. And um, that always, uh, I, I don't know why I always thought when I was young that maybe the story would change somehow. So I was always greatly relieved when I heard that last line. Um, then I also, uh, you all know that I, I think very highly of, um, of uh, Wendell Berry as a poet and a writer. And he has a poem here. Uh, it's called, After the Painting, Jacob's Dream uh, by William Blake, and also from Genesis 28. Um, this is another, it's of course, it's about Jacob and his dream, but it is also about wisdom. It's about understanding. It's about seeing something special. So I thought maybe we could um, listen to this and meditate on this just a minute or two as well. So settle back, it's not very long. Um, and let's hear what Wendell Berry has to say. A young man leaving home for long years to be gone might fall asleep and dream his head upon a stone. A stair appears that bends in spiral toward the light, the bright orb where it ends, though he sleeps through the night, darkened below the stars. Angels in constant motion walk up and down the stairs. Delight and clear devotion make graceful all they do. The light and dark are bound, heaven to all below, bright star and stony ground in one light joined. In sleep, the dreamer wakes. He sees above the stars the deep of heaven open. Is he living then his part of heaven's earthly life? And what shall be the art by which this sight can live? Darkened upon the earth, he fills with light, is made a witness to high truth, and so a man afraid. His land, this meager sod, these stones, this low estate, is the household of God and it is heaven's gate. I, I like so much um, the image of him filling with light, the dark earth, as he's made witness to high truth. And as it turns him, Jacob, from a cocky young man into a man afraid, afraid in that good way, um, that, of, that fear of God, of knowing that there, there is this greater thing there that actually influences him and his life and is calling him to something else, as can happen to any of us, anytime, anywhere. So this one by Wendell Berry, I think is very nice. Very nice. That young man leaving home. And he dreams and he wakes. So I hope you will have a blessed Epiphany season as we head towards Ash Wednesday and Lent. This is a time for looking and understanding and experiencing the light of God, the light of Jesus in the world, um, and the joy that that can bring. Um, so I, I'm hopeful that every one of you will feel that during these next few weeks and um, get great pleasure and comfort and the knowledge of the love of God from it. So in the meantime, um, stay healthy and well. Remember to stay connected. And uh, God bless you, everyone. And I'll see you next week. Bye. Uh-oh, you're evaluating my work. I am. Are you subscribed? I will with a red button. And give us a thumbs up. I'm a fan. Of course.